Hi, I'm Marshall. I'm the owner of Going Gear, and I'm here in our store in Smyrna, Georgia. This is the extended review of the Manker MK35. All right, here we have what is currently one of our longest beam distance flashlights, the Manker MK35, with 1,420 meters of beam distance. That's right, well over a kilometer of beam distance. Super intense hotspot on this. Lights up a relatively wide area with a little over 2,000 lumens at 1,420 meters. Really impressive light, great build quality. We've been really happy with Maker in the year or so that we've been carrying them. And uh, this is one of their latest lights. Really impressive thrower. Let's open it up and take a look at what you get on the inside. Normally, I would read off some specs on the outside, but there's nothing on the outside other than that picture that you saw. So we'll look at the manual here in just a minute. So spare stuff that you get. You've got a lanyard in there, spare O-ring if you happen to need that. Here is the light along with a holster. Holster is open bottom so you can access the bottom of the light. Open it up. Got a whole bunch of hook and loop on there. Got a stainless steel bezel on the light that is protected pretty well by that flap. So it protects the light, protects the lens. And then you have attachment points here on the back, hook and loop, and you've got a slot and you've got the plastic D-ring. Pretty standard holster, but it's nice that they included it because a lot of the larger lights that we've been getting these days, especially in this size, have not been including holsters. So the Maker MK35 does include a holster. And that's it, you know, pretty standard stuff. You don't really expect a whole lot more beyond that. But here is the light relatively large light. You're not going to get something super compact considering the beam distance just because you need a massive reflector. And you can see this one does have that massive reflector with a pretty small LED considering the size of the reflector. So you've got an XHP 35 high LED down in there and a big old, big old smooth reflector, big old lens on there. Got that crenulated bezel to help protect it side switch there on the side but let's use the manual let's take a look at some specs manual always worth the read tells you about operation they give you a nice flow chart showing you how everything works but here are some specifications and if you want to see the full specifications here they are you can pause it if you want to take a look at that for a second but we'll go over a few of them real quick so starts at 0.1 lumens so it can go from 0.1 lumens to 5 lumens you can actually program the moonlight to be which uh, anywhere in between there. They've got some different discrete levels in between 0.1 and 5 lumens. Show you how to do that later, which it can run for up to 1,500 hours. So 0.1 lumens, it'll run for 1,500 hours, which is just nuts. Then you have 47 lumens, 136 lumens, 700 lumens, 1,600 lumens, and then 2550, where it'll run for 15 minutes of the 2550, and then it'll drop down to 1,600 lumens, where it'll run for another two hours. Over 500,000 candela on the intensity, and you've got that 1,420 meters in beam distance. Some other stuff that I always forget to go over because the high-end lights that we carry tend to have this stuff as standard, but this may be the first of my videos that you're watching. You may not be familiar with what you get when you get a high-quality light like this, but really nice machining on it, really nice anodizing, great scratch resistance on it. On the internals as well, not just the externals, everything looks good, but I'll show you that better here in just a little bit. IPX8 on the water and dust rating. Uh, the X means that they don't really rate the dust, but the 8 means, I forget exactly what it is, but it's something like one meter for 30 minutes. Hopefully someone will correct me in the contents and tell me exactly what it is. I can never remember. I should probably just like have it written down over there because I say it in pretty much every video that I can't remember, <laughs> but this is yet another one. Uh, and then 1.5 meters of impact rating. So if you're holding it out and you drop it, basically means that it should be okay. Some other information in there, always good information, talks about the specifications, what's included. And then uh, if you speak Chinese, you have Chinese instructions as well. So we'll go ahead and set that to the side and we'll take a closer look at the MK35. So four 18650 batteries is what powers this. You've got this side switch that's in a great position. So if you're holding the light in your kind of standard position, you got that easy to access side switch. That is, you can see slightly recessed so it's not going to have any problems with uh, accidental activation, or actually it'll greatly reduce those problems. You've got a Transformers-looking logo on there. I like, their, I like their logo. And then we'll turn it around. You can see lots of surface area, lots of heat sinking ability in here. So when it gets up to that max output, that's how it's able to run 
for 15 minutes at the max output versus the three to four minutes that you get in a lot of other lights when they're running at the max output is because you got all this surface area. You got all this, this ways, all the ways to dissipate the heat. You got all these fins on here and it's just a relatively large light. So it's got a just surface area to get that heat off of there, get that heat off the LED and help keep it running, keep it running for a long time. Tripod mount. I find that really, really useful. It's kind of nice when I'm doing outdoor stuff to have a tripod mount. We've been selling a lot of lights to the film and movie and photography guys, and they really like to have the ability to uh, mount it to a tripod. So you have your hands free. You know, you can point it at a, at a distant object, have it lit up really well. Maybe you can go over to that distant object. Maybe you can do some different camera shots. Maybe you just want to have your hands free and have something else lit up. So you've got the tripod mount on there, which is really nice. And then you have some logos engraved on there. I don't know why manufacturers do this. I wish they would stop, but uh, they have them engraved on there and that's something we see on a lot of lights. So not exactly an exception for Maker. Lanyard attachment points. So here are the lanyard attachment points you've got there on the back. Then you've got of course Maker and then the model engraved on there. That makes sense to engrave on there. Keep on doing that. And then some nice machining and knurling on there to make it very, very grippy. You got a bunch of edges in there, just ways to make it without any hot spots have a bunch of different ways to grip it and keep your hand on there, keep it from slipping out of your hand. And even with batteries, uh, not a super heavy light, but it's not exactly lightweight, not something I'd want to EDC, but something very reasonable to have by your door or in your vehicle, or if you're doing search and rescue to have in your pack, that kind of stuff. Basically when size and weight are not a very high concern for you, I wouldn't take this backpacking, but outside of that, a truck light for lighting stuff up in the distance. Light is powered by four 18650 batteries. As with any flashlight that we sell, make sure you are using high quality batteries from a reputable source. Of course, anything that we sell is gonna be high quality. But if you happen to buy batteries for, from someone else, shame on you, first of all. But make sure they're high quality, make sure they're getting them from a good source because you don't want something that's delivering a bunch of power to the circuitry and the LED not to be high quality because then you have problems with fire and explosions and all the things you hear about on TV and read about associated with lithium ion batteries. Uh, if you're going to use protected ones, make sure you the, they actually have good protection in there. And then of course you can use IMRs in here as well. doesn't require IMRs, but you can use IMRs if you want to. So we're going to stick four 18650s in there. We're going to take that battery cap off or the tail cap off. Show you what's on the inside. So this is something that I like that Maker is doing. They have the battery holder and everything integrated into the flashlight instead of having one that pulls out. It's just one less thing that can break, one less failure point, one less thing to lose. Not that I've ever had that issue with any lights and not that that's ever been an issue with our customers. You know, we haven't had to send out a whole lot of replacement battery carriers over the years, but it's just nice to have that extra step. So you can see it's all machined and in, in, uh, into the body of the light itself. So four 18650 batteries, let's grab four of those and we're gonna stick them in there. So the closest four batteries I had on my desk were four Olight HTC 18650s. These are IMRs that can deliver really high current. Again, not necessarily necessary for the MK35, but it doesn't do anything bad. So we'll go ahead and use these, stick them, the four of those lights in there. And since this doesn't come with batteries, it doesn't have built-in charging, I'll make sure when I upload the video that we have bundles for all this on the site. So you can get everything and know that you're getting appropriate batteries for the light. Make sure you're getting the right charger and all that kind of stuff for the batteries. So take a look in the comments or in the description. I'll make sure I have a link to there, uh, to the to the bundle. Save you a little bit of money on it too. So before I go over the interface, one thing to note is that this is also available in a neutral white. So the one I'm using right now is a cool white, but we'll take both of them outside just so you can see what it looks like in real world conditions. Neutral white's gonna drop your output by about 10 to 15% and your uh, distance as well. So you're gonna get lower distance. I prefer it just because of the colors. Green and browns look better. Uh, it's definitely a total personal preference. Our sales on distance lights like this, definitely overwhelmingly cool white, but I like the neutral white just because of the colors. You can get whichever one you want. We stock both of them. But again, I'll show you that when we go outside, just so you can see what it looks like when you're outside. So tap that side switch. It's going to turn the light on. You're like, hey, man, that light's not on. Well, I have the moonlight set to a super duper low right now. So the light defaults to the lowest output, whatever you have it set to when you press that side switch the first time. 
And then each time you press it, it's going to cycle up. And then when it gets up, it's going to start going back down, which is pretty cool. Normally, you start back over at the lowest mode, but this one goes up and then down and then up and down and keeps on cycling through all the different ones. Now, you have some other output groups in there or another output group in there. And the way to get into that is to double click and it will go into turbo. So it'll go into the highest output. And then you got strobe and then you got SOS and you got a beacon mode. And then it's going to go back into the regular output modes after that. And it does not have a memory for the uh, special outputs. It does have a memory for your regular output. So the way to get into those, so to turn the light off, press and hold for about half a second, it'll turn the light off. And then when you press and hold, that's how you get back into your regular outputs. So it's kind of nice. So you don't have to worry about long presses or double presses or anything like that to get into the lowest output. You just tap that switch and it's going to go into your lowest output if you're worried about ruining your night vision or anything like that. I personally find these super duper ultra low modes in a thrower like this kind of useless because they're so concentrated, but I know a lot of people like them. You have that option in there. I personally prefer a more floody light if I'm going to go for low output lights, but it's really nice that they include this in the interface. For people that do want that, you have that ability, you have that option. If you want to bump up the moonlight mode, you can do that as well. We'll go over that here in just a little bit. But just so I can show you, let's go into the turbo and then we'll go into the strobe. And I'm gonna turn it off and then we're gonna turn it back on. And you can see it does not memorize. It's gonna memorize whatever regular output you had it in last. So from off, you can also get straight into the turbo. If you just double click, it'll go straight into the turbo and that will also push you in your special mode groups. So you also get the flashing modes as well. And then if you have it, We'll go into that and we'll double click and it's going to, as you can see, cycle between your different mode groups. So when you have it on or when you have it off, every time you double click, it's gonna cycle between your special mode groups and then the regular mode groups, which are just your regular output levels. So pretty cool interface on this. A lot of different options that you can get to from off. You get to the lowest output, you can get to the highest output, which are the two that I care about the most. And then you have that memorized output and then you can quickly get to strobe and your other flashing modes as well. There's also a lockout mode. So the way to get into the lockout mode is you click one time, then two times, then three times. So we go one, and it's going to be locked out. So that way, when you press the switch, the light will not turn on. If you have it in your pack or something like that, you don't want the lights accidentally turn on, melt holes and holsters and all the other things that these high output lights can do. Always a good idea to put it in lockout if you're gonna have it in long-term storage pull the batteries out. And the only thing that's going to work is that battery indicator on the switch there. So that'll illuminate, but the LED uh, on the light will not turn on. So kind of nice features that they have in there. And then just do it again to get it back out of that lockout mode. Okay, so the way to get into the engineering mode is where you can choose the different moonlight output levels is you press and hold and turn it off. And then you're going to see that side switch turn on. And then you click it four times and then you are in your engineering mode. So now when we're tapping that side switch, it's cycling through your different moonlight levels. And you can see every time I click it, it's just getting a little bit brighter. And you can see the lowest one is even lower than what I had it set to originally. It is super, super low. It's pretty useless in my opinion, but you have the option to do it. I don't know if you can even see, you can see that's actually turned on. I mean, with a light this focused, I don't know what you're gonna do with light that low, but you have the option if you happen to want it. Maybe there's some applications for light that low and that concentrated. I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments what they use a light this big, that concentrated for in such a low output. But uh, hey man, you have the ability, that's pretty cool. I like lights that give you the ability to do things for those specialized use cases, just in case you're one of the guys that happens to need that specialized uh, application. There you go, you have it in there. And then once you choose the one you want, you just press and hold and it will memorize that. So now you have that memorized as your moonlight mode. So pretty cool option, it's something like most programmable lights, most people will never touch, never use, but if you happen to need it, you have that ability. So good on them for doing that. So we'll go over the interface again real quick, press that side switch to turn the light on. It'll go into whatever moonlight mode you have it set in. Keep on tapping, it'll cycle up and down through your different outputs. Double click to get into your turbo, click again strobe, and then you have your other flashing modes, and eventually you'll get back into your regular outputs. 
and then from off if you double click you can get into the turbo as well and then uh, another click will get into strobe and then i showed you the lockout and the programming and all that kind of stuff some other specs that i always forget to cover because again a lot of the lights that we sell have these kind of specifications but if this is your first time seeing a light like this, let's talk about some of the other stuff that you can get. So you have a constant current circuit in here. That's actually something that you don't get with a lot of lights. A lot of them will use PWM where they rapidly flash the LED on and off, which our eyes can't really see uh, unless you're really sensitive to it or you're moving the light around a lot. But it's a very efficient design and it's something that a lot of manufacturers don't do. So it's nice that they have the constant current circuit on there. You've got uh, type 3 hard anodizing, so very, very scratch resistant. So if you happen to get it scratched up against something, you can see that it's not going to scratch very easily. So running a knife across it is not going to scratch it. Obviously, if I gouge down, hardened steel is going to scratch aluminum because hardened steel is a lot harder than aluminum. But just regular use, the finish is going to hold up really, really well. And then on that lens on there, you've got uh, glass lens. So it's a hardened glass lens and you've got an anti-reflective coating on there. And then you have the ability to tail stand. So you've got a flat tail stand ability on there. If you happen to want to use this for a lantern, if you're in a room, you shine it up at the ceiling, it'll light the whole room up. So it's nice to have that ability and power outages or anything like that. That's always a request that we get or uh, something that people ask about lights is does it have the ability to tail stand? And you can see, yes, the MK35 does tail stand very well. And you got the nice crenulations on that stainless steel bezel. So that's the Maker MK35. We are going to take this and the neutral white version outside. We'll show you how they do outside. We'll show you the crazy, crazy beam distances you can get with these lights. Let's go ahead and go do that. All right, got the two MK35s outside. Got the big 40 mag light that I always use as a control. Let's go ahead and try the mag light out first. The little tree right there is about 30 feet away. Dock house down there on the lake is about 100 feet away. Standard 4D incandescent mag light. Let's try out those two MK35s. We will do the cool white one first. I think that's what I have first. Yep, got the cool white first. Now you got like a laser beam coming out of this thing. It's a pretty cool beam. Very, 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 very tightly focused, obviously. It's almost still too bright at uh, the max output at 100 feet away. You can see very tightly focused beam. And of course that dock house is extremely well lit up. And as you'll see, when we go out to a longer distance here in just a little bit, it excels at distance. Not really something you're gonna to wanna to use at up close kind of stuff. If you're trying to read like a book right in front of you, you have such a tightly focused hotspot, you get a very uh, much of a tunnel vision effect. And you can use the spill to kind of light stuff up, but this is definitely a distance light. I don't really recommend it for general purpose, but you can see it is awesome, awesome at distances. The throw on is just incredible. So cycle through the lower outputs so you can see those. There's the lowest one. I can barely see stuff out at about 30 feet away. We'll start bumping it up. You can see even on not very many lumens, still lights stuff up pretty darn well. Then it just keeps on getting better, more apparent. And then the flood starts becoming useful. And again, I really like how it ramps down instead of just going straight back to the lowest output from the highest output. That's pretty cool. I like that they have that on their interface. Maker has a uh, pretty well thought out interface. So that's the cool white. Here is the neutral white. So you can see colors just a little bit better and just a little bit lower output. So it's definitely a compromise, totally a per personal preference. For uh, flashlights, we overwhelmingly sell more cool white. For headlamps, it's about 50-50. But uh, especially for throwers, people tend to prefer the cool white because you get that little bit better distance. But uh, I like the neutral white just because of the colors. Greens and browns look a little bit more green and brown, but uh, totally up to you. Zoom in down there, just so you can see what it looks like down there. Lake's not doing so well right now. But we will turn that back off and we'll pop it onto the lowest output again, where you're just gonna really light stuff up right in front of you because it's so low. Um, you can see how low it is. <laughs> and I'm basically lighting up the palm of my hand and I've got it about 18 inches away from the flashlight. So not super useful unless you wanna read a really small area at once, then you can do that but you start bumping it up and then you get surprisingly good throw, really good battery life. And then you get the ramp bump it down, which I like, it's pretty cool. The 
we're going to go ahead and put that back on turbo, put the cool white on turbo. We'll do it back and forth just so you can quickly see the difference in the tints. Not a drastic difference in the intensity. You'll start noticing it over hundreds of meters, but at this kind of distance, you're not really going to notice a difference in the intensity. And uh, let's see if you can notice it out at about 100 meters. So let's try this out at a longer distance and see how they do. All right, got some more space to show you how the MK35 can really shine. <laughs> let's go ahead and do the cool white first again. There you can see at a distance, still lights up things crazy well. So that's about 20 feet, that boat. Got a couple targets set up out there. That first one is 50 yards. Second one's 100 yards. Tree line out there is 130 yards. You can see if you're spotting animals or just trying to see what's going on at a distance, lights like this make it very easy to see what's going on out there. There's no question about what's out there. You don't have to worry about dark colors or anything like that where less intense lights, it's kind of hard to see the, uh, the darker colors to make things out very well. But this one, you can see at a distance very well. So if you're trying to spot something out there, it's really easy to do. And even at the lower outputs. So let's show you the lower outputs. So there's the low. Let me turn my headlamp off. There you go, there's the low by itself. And we'll slowly go up through the other ones. You can see what those look like out at the distance. Okay, let's try out the neutral white. We'll try the neutral white one next. So there's the neutral white on the max output. And uh, you've got that distance, plus you've got the really good uh, CRI. You've got the better CRI on there. So you can make out colors even better. So you got the great illumination and the great colors. Really nice combination. Again, totally a personal preference. We overwhelmingly sell more cool white, especially in the throwers. But you can see, hopefully, why I like the neutral white. Get those nice colors out there compared to the cool white things. Don't look, look uh, quite as washed out. Let me show you the lower outputs on this one. There's your super duper ultra low. And then we'll start cranking through. You can see even on the next one up, lights up 20 feet away pretty well. And then you start getting that distance. Very cool lights. As far as thrower go, throwers go, these are some of the best I've ever seen. Obviously some of the best distance you can get out there. Honestly, if you're going out beyond the distances these are rated for, uh, you're going to need some sort of spotting scope or some binoculars because your eyes aren't going to be able to see any kind of detail at that kind of distance anyway. But if you do happen to have that need, these are some excellent, excellent throwers. You can see even at a decent distance, they light up a relatively wide area at once considering how intense the hot spot is. And you do have that very, very usable spill that I'll shine it up. You can see lights up stuff for probably a good 30, 40 yards really well on its own. So the spill itself is super useful. So I'm gonna turn that one off and then we're gonna do them side by side again. So we'll do a cool white, neutral white, so you can quickly see the difference without having to rewind or anything like that. But there you go. That is the Manker MK35. Awesome thrower distance light. If you like them, you can buy them from me at goinggear.com. As always, get going and start something. Thanks for watching.